Hey, good day, boys and girls. You're watching Rock the Blog Live Daily News with me, Eugene Tay. And this episode was brought to you by One Chain, the world's first cross chain solution for the financial infrastructure. First up, headline news on FADIP and Full Moon. Have you guys heard of the project called Eden Chain? Well, it seems that Eden Chain is in a bit of a controversy right now because the blockchain protocol for enterprise usage and security has altered their token distribution in the latest post by increasing circulation supply by 150 million tokens after the sales and the listing. In a statement, they claim this is to provide greater transparency on the circulating supply of tokens now at 630 million EDNs with a five month vesting period. Now, why did they just increase the circulating pool, you may ask? Well, it's, it seems that the hard cap of $24 million just isn't enough for them, and they have onboarded some strategic partners who came up at the last minute promising value that they could deliver. And by taking on these new strategic partners, they have to churn out more coins to fit this extra mouth. And this certainly is not the way blockchain works because you don't just get to make up the rules, change the rules anytime you want. People invest in the original vision, in the original promise. And for it to be listed and then to just increase the supply affects a lot of things, not just one part of your integrity. It really affects people's decision on wanting to come in or not. Even Ian Balena himself have tweeted disappointment in them saying, disappointed with Eden Chain, changing terms on the community. Well, I'm not an advisor to Eden Chain and I'm simply frustrated investor like everyone else. Tired with all this project, screwing people over after taking community's money. And that is exactly what most of us feel because in the blockchain scene right now, in the cryptocurrency scene especially, not the blockchain tech, but the cryptocurrency play, we are looking at projects just going in for the money grab, raising millions of dollars, and then unable to perform their promises, or just at their wimp and fancy changing the rules of engagement. In pumped up dumps, Sirin Labs, the guys who's gonna bring you Fine, which is a blockchain phone or a smartphone with blockchain. Will there be a new term now called block phone, perhaps? Well, they're gonna be releasing the product at the end of this year, November 28th to be exact. And in fact, on the launch time, there'll be a media coverage and Lionel Messi will be there. Lionel is the ambassador for the phone. Besides all the celebrity endorsement on this f world's first block phone, uh, the specifications on the Fini phone is Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 mobile platform, whatever that means. 6 inch, 18 to 9 display, SD memory card up to 2 terabytes. Wow, not too bad. 6 gigabyte RAM, 12 MP main camera, 8 MP front camera, 3280 mAh for battery life. That's slightly less than Huawei, but more than Apple. Everything's more than Apple. And a fingerprint sensor. Well, the smartphone is expected to cost about $1,000, which, to be honest, puts it at a very competitive price point because most phones out in the market is around that price point, with Apple being top of the chain. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer resource sharing, built-in cold storage crypto wallet, and distributed ledger consensus combined with other smartphone functions, it just means that this phone is going to turn heads of a lot of people both supporters as well as critics and naysayers. Right at the same time where Fini is launching, HTC is also launching their block phone and this is going to be a neck-to-neck -neck competition to see which brand dominates the crypto market. Also talking about the market today, in a somewhat unexpected and abnormal rally point, XRP has beat Ethereum to second place. Now, most of you have been asking, What's up with this rise in prices? In fact, XRP has raised 180 plus percent in just one week, putting another $19 billion in the market cap. $19.8 billion, that's almost 20. Uh, so this is the barometer determining XRP's level of FUD and FOMO this week. So you may be asking, what's causing this FUD or FOMO? Or rather, what's causing this FOMO is that Ripple Lab's long-anticipated cryptocurrency service XRapid is commercially launching as soon as next month. 
So people are now jumping onto the bandwagon expecting XRP to moon. XRapid is a commercial payment service for financial institutions to use XRP tokens for conducting cross-border transactions, now finally giving the company Ripple a real use case for its tokens. However, unlike RapidNet, which is a different project for cross-border transactions among banks, XRapid has yet to form any major partnerships with mainstream financial institutions. Another domino effect came probably from Wikipedia, Twitch, and YouTube, courtesy of a partnership with San Francisco-based company called Coil. Now, Coil, interestingly enough, is headed by former Ripple Lab CTO Stefan Thomas, who revealed that content creators on these social media sites can now earn tips via XRP tokens. So we talked about how Wikipedia wouldn't want to go into cryptocurrency and how YouTube wouldn't be able to help the uh, content creators monetize. Now it seems XRP through Coil has a way for content creators like us to make some money, giving a lot of the smaller players in the industry who's trying to solve that problem a run for their crypto money. The third and final piece of news that might have contributed to the rise of XRP pricing is that PNC, a US $380 billion US banking giant, is set to join RippleNet to enable near instant money transfer on the blockchain. If you think that you might have missed out on the XRP train to the moon, another project that you might want to take a look at is Stella Lumens. Stella Lumens have very close ties with Ripple, but they don't service the same demographic, which is the banks. So if you think you like Ripple and you want to jump on a bandwagon, I do recommend you to look at Stella Lumens as well. In media sizing the regulators, although Rock the Block is giving you the world news from an Asian perspective, this piece of news out of US seems to be very important because I think this will affect the world in a good way. Now let's take a look at what Republican US Congressman Tom Emmer is currently proposing. He is currently proposing three bills centered around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And the three bills are First one, resolution supporting digital currencies and blockchain technology. Now this is really cool because he expressed support for the industry and its development in the United States. Like the internet, the federal government should provide a light touch, consistent and simple legal environment. So we do look into the pot, but we don't touch and stir the pot unnecessarily, letting innovation take place and grow on its own. Next bill is a Blockchain Regulatory Certainty Act, which affirms that certain blockchain-related entities that never control consumers' money do not need to register as a money transmitter. Examples of such crypto players that do not touch consumers' money are miners. So miners, they actually validate the network integrity and multi-signature providers that provide enhanced asset security to users. Now these guys are excused from certain laws. The third bill, safe harbor for taxpayers with forked asset act. Now, many of us in the crypto scene, especially uh, the older guys who are running legit businesses, we do want to pay our taxes. But unfortunately, right now, we can't pay our taxes, we can't declare our revenue, we can't take any form of uh, advantage from the bank because crypto is not seen as legal tender. So in this policy or in this bill, taxpayers can only comply with the law when the law is clear. This is a good idea. And the bill will provide a safe harbor for taxpayers with fork digital assets. Further, it will restrict fines against individuals that attempt to report their assets until the IRS provides any type of guidance regarding the appropriate means of reporting them. So what's so important about this piece of news is that Right now, we are seeing all these bills passing through and creating a regulatory framework that actually would appeal to a lot of serious crypto people or institutional investors who wanted a more legal play in this field with enough flexibility but yet rules to protect and govern businesses. So when this bill gets through, what we will be seeing, and I'm really speculating here, is that trillions of dollars will pour in because now everybody is able to function as a business in this framework compared to what we have now in the crypto scene where you get speculators, scammers, or anyone just going in for a quick gamble.
in founders and use chains. Oprah, we're not talking about Oprah Winfrey here, we're talking about Oprah the browser has launched a Labs edition that allows the web-based browsers like Mac, Linux, and Windows to interoperate with their offline wallet. The new edition will allow users to authenticate Web 3.0 and decentralized applications transactions made on their computer using Android-based devices. From September 7th, both mobile app and desktop client has already supported digital collectibles, which are effectively non-fungible tokens, such as CryptoKitties, Gods Unchained, etc, etc. So the users can send directly between Oprah, crypto wallets, and their desktop wallet. In block hit lockdown, the final piece of news that we have today is a very interesting article I want to talk about because it clearly shows how people are still very unfamiliar and unknowledgeable about the crypto industry. India's Directorate of Enforcement, the ED, has linked USD $60 million worth of assets in connection with its probe against crypto author Amit Hadvaj. In the alleged Bitcoin Ponzi fraud that has raised $5.26 billion, the India law enforcement has seized and frozen various assets and properties of gainbitcoin.com. In fact, right here in Singapore, up to 8,000 people have been duped into investing in gainbitcoin.com Ponzi scheme. Now, how does this work? Gainbitcoin.com runs the operation by booking expensive hotels, running events, almost like a seminar with thousands of people in attendance, all trying to get rich quick. So they would tell you some fanciful stories about investing in their company, uh, either with mining or through earning bitcoins, and that's how you can be rich. They will put out newspaper articles, they will buy ads to give people the false sense of confidence that getbitcoin.com is actually the main company that produces bitcoin. Right? And it's so easy to fall prey to this because if you are not in cryptocurrency and you hear about Bitcoin news and people making money in Bitcoin, and then you have this very nice, well-dressed gentleman running his event in a very expensive hotel room, uh, a ballroom, you begin to feel that that's where the money is. And that's how a lot of poor people who want to get rich actually start putting in money in getbitcoin.com. And they've ran this scheme with so many different places and raised so much money that by the time people are supposed to get back their money and their dividends, Amit just ran away with every single cent. In fact, one of the Indian parliamentarians also mistook Bitcoin for getbitcoin.com and said Bitcoin is actually Ponzi, which is not true. Because getbitcoin.com is Ponzi, but Bitcoin is, well, it's a cryptocurrency. So it's, again, it's very clear to see that how little information is actually going out to the masses. And that's why scammers get away with running bullshit Ponzi schemes like this. But what happens at the end is that by the time he has to pay back the money, what he does is after collecting 8,000 Bitcoins, he created a private bullshit useless coin called MCP and gave this back or rather MCAP and gave this back to all the investors. And he bought advertisements and um, sponsored stories from around the globe, giving people again the false sense that MCAP is worth a lot of money. Well, that's all the news we have for you today. So ladies and gentlemen watching this, you guys are more crypto savvy than the crowd out there. So what I would encourage you guys to do is please just go around talking about this to the rest of your friends. If anyone needs advice, go and give them some tip or two because you probably know a lot more than someone who just have no clue whatsoever. So that doesn't make you an expert, that makes you a lot more experienced and therefore you have a responsibility to help the rest of the masses. Now, if you can't do that, the next best thing to do is to refer them to this video. So like, share, subscribe, and also head on to our website at www.rocktheblog.live. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Eugene Tay signing out.